Hello and welcome to part four of the Wonderland's Dream card reveal. So this time around, we have some of the cards that we talked about last time but didn't get to see. So we're going to go kind of back over those just a little bit and look at their official translations and such, just to, you know, keep them fresh, keep them bright, you know, that sort of thing. There are also a few new cards thrown in the mix, along with a couple of the last cards being released on Twitch just recently. So we'll take a quick look at all of those. So let's get right into this. So, first up, we've got the Red Branch Knight, which we did take a look at, the 2-2 Havencraft card, gold. We have Fanfare, until the start of your next turn, your leader cannot receive more than 3 damage at a time. So, basically just the 3 damage block card we talked about, so if you want to check that out, make sure to check out the end of the last video. Then we have the Fortress Crab, the Dragoncraft, 9 cost, 6, 8, with Ward, Evolve, last word, put a Fortress Crab into your hand. So, basically the last word turns it into a Mordecai sort of situation, but it's a really quite a high cost, not a bad Ward though. Maybe we'll see it come out in an Ocean Dragon, which I still think would be an awesome type to push. So, next we also have the Mad Hatter, a 7 drop, 4, 5. We have Shadowcraft Bronze, not too bad at all. We got Fanfare, destroy an allied follower and summon a Tin Soldier. Doesn't activate if no other allied followers are in play. So we actually do have Tin Soldier in this lineup, so we do get to see what Tin Soldier looks like and what it does, so we can value this card a little better than last time. Which is this card, so Tin Soldier, a 5 drop 4 5 bronze, neutral card obviously, going along with the Mad Hatter. So we got Evolve, deal 3 damage to an enemy. So. We have the Mad Hatter with its fanfare, summoning, uh, destroying an allied follower and summon a Tin Soldier, and then with Tin Soldier you get Evolve, deal 3 damage to an enemy. So, you're getting 2 bodies for 7, and if you do use the Evolve you're getting 2 really good bodies with 3 damage, at the cost of 1 follower. The next card is one of the cards that I don't believe was part of the last the last slot we looked at, so this is a new one for, for me. We have Poisoned Apple of Rebirth. It's a 2-drop Shadowcraft card. Change your neutral follower into a Shadowcraft follower. Give the follower last word, summon another follower of the same name. So this basically gives the Mordecai effect. That's what we're gonna, we're gonna call this the Mordecai effect from now on. So it transforms any neutral into a Shadow follower and then lets it resummon itself once. So this will be great for high cost followers especially, especially in a decent neutral shadow. This will probably be a huge kind of card that will allow them to double play cards, you know, combo this with Lucifer, combo it with Israfil, combo it with, you know, anything like that and you're going to have a wonderful time. The next card we have is Gruff Mountaineer Captain, so it's a 5 drop 3 5 neutral. I can't did we look at this card? I can't remember whether that was part of it. But anyway, it's a rush whenever this follower attacks. Attacks an enemy follower with at least 5 attack. The follower can't be damaged until the end of turn. Sorry, whenever this follower attacks, an enemy follower with at least 5 attack. This follower can't be damaged. Yeah, so I don't think we looked at this. We might have. I'm not sure. But I think I looked at this, but I don't think the translation was spot on. I'm not sure. Maybe. Either way, basically, this card will allow you to ram into anything bigger than you. So, you know, ram into Oro, ram into whatever you want. This thing will be great for something like that. So we have the next card, Axe Destroyer, a 6-drop, six 6-vive, six a Swordcraft Officer. Not bad. Its Evolve effect is Destroy an Enemy Follower or Amulet. Mm, yeah, not bad. Can't go wrong with that effect, that's for sure. It's, you know, for a 6 cost, it's a little high, but destroying an amulet is pretty good for most cards. So, I don't know I don't know if we'll see it played unless an officer deck that can run it comes out, but it's definitely interesting. The next one we have is Monk of Purification, a 6-drop, six 4-6 six Havencraft card. Fanfare, put 2 M Mosaic Holy Waters in your hand. So, Mosaic Holy Waters are the plus 2, draw a card. So, this should be really good. I can't, you know, in a, in a heal Elena deck... I could definitely see you running this card as a 6-drop instead of something like Judge of Retribution or maybe even running this over, um, uh, what was it? I can't remember what it was called now, but this is a really nice card, so I, I hope to see this played. The next card is Beauty and the Beast, which we did talk about and we did get a quick image of last time, but now we have all the official translation for it, and it seems like my, ana my analysis was spot on for the card. So it's a 6-drop, 5-6. Fanfare, gain plus two if you have at least five cards in your hand. Gain resistance to damage 
and destruction from spells and effects. So the way this is worded is exactly what I had assumed. So it gains resistance to damage and destruction from spells and effects. So it can't be damaged, it can't be destroyed by spells and effects. That's basically it. So battle damage will kill it, it can be banished, it can be transformed, and it can be returned. Those are the three, like, three or four things that will affect Beauty and the Beast. If you have at least three neutrals in your hand, obviously. So that follows up nicely. Next, we've also got the Goblin Leader card, which, you know, I think I might have been Goblin Captain. Uh, I can't remember the translation now, but it's a three drop, one, two, you know, not bad. I think the translation was slightly different because this one is summon a goblin at the end of your turn, not just summon a goblin. I, at first, I thought maybe it was just summon a goblin, but summon a goblin at the end of your turn is actually hell of a lot better. It means if this card sticks around for more than one turn on your board, then you're going to have uh, multiple golems, uh, goblins, which could be interesting for certain decks. I definitely could see this fitting into some form of neutral rush kind of deck. Maybe replacing... I don't think it will replace early aggro cards for three, but maybe... I don't know. There's certain things this might be good for. I just haven't thought of them yet. Next we have the White Ridge Swordsman, a 5 drop, 3, 4, Bane and Ward, and then Evolve whenever this follower attacks an enemy follower. Destroy the enemy follower before it can deal any damage. So this is the Swordcraft Officer that basically gains Medusa upon Evolve. Very interesting. We talked about that a little bit in the last video, but there's not much else to say about it. It's a nice body. Not too bad a cost for its effect and its Ward. The next card we have is the Illusionist, which I love the artwork of. It's just so amazing, and I can't wait to see both its Evolve and its animated versions. So it's a 5 cost 4-4 four, four, Runecraft card. Fanfare, randomly summon one of your highest cost followers that has been destroyed during this match and give it Rush. Banish it at the start of your next turn. So, you know, basically what we talked about, summon a high cost and then give it Rush and banish it at the start of your next turn. Could be interesting in a neutral deck. I don't see it being much use in anything like D-Shift. Maybe in a Daria deck, but it's probably not going to fit just because of how Daria works. So definitely probably more of a neutral or opening up a whole new design space for high cost, high cost room. Then we've got the official translations for both Rapunzel and the other card that were announced for Gamer. Um, basically, you know, we've got Rapunzel here. Basically what we talked about, can't attack. When played or at the start of your turn, whenever another allied follower has attacked this turn, this can attack. So not much else to say about that card. Rabbit Ear Attendant, so we've got a 3 cost, 2, 3. Fanfare, draw X cards equal to... Uh, X equals to the number of neutral allied followers, which we talked about. Being a pretty good sword, sword card, being an officer, it's pretty good. So I don't see that being too bad of a problem for maybe a mid to... A uh, mid to control style sword deck, maybe it'll replace Grimnir, maybe not, maybe you'll play it alongside it, who really knows. Now, onto a new card we have, Spawn of the Abyss, Bloodcraft's second legendary, I believe. So, it's an 8 cost, 6, 7, ambush, whenever this follower attacks, deals 6 damage to the enemy leader. If ambush is active for this follower, last word, deals 6 damage to the enemy leader, if ambush is active for this follower. So... At best, you can do 12 da- uh, sorry, at, yeah, sorry, at best, because the effect is the same for Evolve except it gains plus 2. So at best, you're doing 16 damage if you hit face with this, I believe. Yeah, because you get the 8 for dealing damage and 8 to face. So, And with Ambush, you're guaranteed that this will pretty much stick around. So imagine a Deepwood Anomaly that can basically just stay on the board. You can get maximum of 16, a minimum of 12 with this card if there are no wards to get through. And if there are wards, you can at least score a six or eight damage deal, which in blood can pretty much kill your opponent most of the time. And if this card is killed by anything, such as tribunal, decree, anything like that, then you also get the six or eight damage depending on if it's evolved or unevolved, which is just crazy. This card I can see working in easily in control blood, maybe even as a finisher in some more aggro -y variants where, you know, you're playing this turn 8 and that's it. Could be interesting. And we have Hector, a 5 cost 4-4 four, four gold, neutral, ward, fanfare, deal 3 damage to an enemy if you have at least 3 neutrals in your hand. So, it just fits with the neutral archetype, stats aren't too bad, it is a ward which I like. Dealing 3 damage to an enemy is great, especially if you can hit their face. But I don't know whether you would want to run this over maybe 
um, Ogre, I think it's Ogre. Uh, basically the 3 damage plus 3 on Evolve. I know like it's a higher cost and stuff, but this still... I don't know whether this would be worth running over that. So that rounds up all the cards for this video. I don't believe there is any more. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Give your opinions on these cards and what you think will be broken or not broken for now. And if there is any more cards coming out, I will be covering those. I think we're at somewhere around the 70 mark. So we've got about 30 odd cards to go. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. If you did, smack a like on it. Hit the subscribe button for more. And I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.